guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we're doing a little bit of a different Q&A. Today I wanted to answer all your styling questions. I get quite a bit of DMs from you asking how you can style certain things, what are some of the best goes to for essentials. So I wanted to like compile the best of the best and give it to you. First I wanted to say a huge thank you to Vivea for sponsoring this video. Are we ready to get into This is me after one coffee. So the first question that I get and I actually appreciate that you guys are asking is what is my favorite sustainable brand? Now I love fashion and I truly find inspiration from a lot of different brands but I'm also aware that you know we want to be mindful with the way we consume fashion and if we can find essentials that are made well and that look great in a sustainable brand I mean hopefully that's where the whole industry is going. If you don't know about Vivea they're actually a really chic footwear brand that uses recycled and environmental friendly materials to create their products. So they actually started with shoes but now they are launching clothing and bags which is really amazing and it's really cool to see how it's all made. So fun fact, six bottles of plastic will create one pair of flat shoes. Amazing. So not only is this brand sustainable, they are really comfortable and really soft. So I picked this black booty with a little heel. This is kind of like an essential shoe to have. So to create this pair of shoes, it actually took 12 plastic bottles. Isn't it amazing? There's really beautiful attention to details and it stretches with you. So if you have any issues with either a narrow foot or a wide foot, this is something that will really work around your uh, foot and make sure that you are extremely comfortable and although it's elastic it holds the foot really well so you don't need to worry about like being uncomfortable the next pair are these tie high boots I love these these feel like you're just wearing really comfy socks also a little bit of a heel it has like a classic shape to it this has more of kind of an oval nose so you can really take it from day to night easily I can see so many different ways to wear it I personally picked the brown ones to kind of help and bring a bit more color into my wardrobe in fall or winter so as I mentioned they also have clothing and I'm actually wearing this really really comfortable top for from them this is a straight across the neck top again a very essential part of your wardrobe I opted for more of a laid-back casual look the fabric is so soft you also have the bag that they launch this is like a great tote bag for every day this is from recycled polyester and they have a lot of different styles I really like the knitting effect here and it's very durable doesn't stretch which is good and I obviously have a code for you for some extra discount you can use a val at checkout let me know what you get I want to see it on you and hopefully I introduced you to a great sustainable brand that will serve the purpose you need it to serve next question is what do I wear to a black tie event Aha, I'm happy you asked I always opt for just like a beautiful long gown sometimes it's difficult to find especially if you're on a budget so if you are on a budget I would recommend to go for darker colors because with the black with like a navy the fabric is not super super important that makes sense. Black can conceal a lot of quality issues and I would always go for like a more of an A-line or something like more of a classic fit. It depends what you want to highlight so if you love your shoulders and you want more of like a moment here go for a strapless because where you can actually bring a lot of chicness and a lot of your own style is in the accessories and the hair. So so easy and always a default look for me to go for like either a slick bun or a little bit of a Hollywood wave, just beautiful makeup, maybe a lip, and then a clutch, and you're good to go. Also, sometimes something that I love to do and kind of play on that kind of masculine, feminine vibes is to wear a suit, like a tuxedo suit for a woman. Ah! can't resist. I would also really make sure that you wear a color that makes you feel good. Honestly, you gotta wear what makes you 
feel beautiful and empowered and really just like glam it up. Give me some ideas to what to wear to the office. I can't really recommend any looks with skirts to the office because I just know I wouldn't feel comfortable so I'm you know, bringing you a little bit of a styling advice from my point of view. So I would really focus on really great trousers, which you can find in a lot of different places. Again, you want to make sure that the fit is right. If I had to come down to two styles to keep, it would probably be kind of like a more narrow silhouette, a little bit of a cigarette trouser, and then also something that's more high waist and then kind of opens up a little, not a bell bottom, but like a palazzo pants in a way, but not as wide, you know what I mean. That kind of pant you can put with a sweater, with a turtleneck, you can put some jewelry, some boots, you're good to go. There's a lot of really great work appropriate uh, shoes, kind of like Manolo Blahnik inspired, keeping it really clean and professional. So I think it really depends on the work environment you work in. There are some places, like if you work at Google, I'm sure you can probably come with like I don't know, shorts and cowboy boots, I don't know. How do I stop wearing so much black? Aha! This is, I feel like, a big question that a lot of people ask themselves. I love black, there's nothing wrong with black, but if you do feel you got to a point where you are comfortable experimenting and pushing yourself a little bit out of your comfort zone, I honestly highly recommend. There's been an actual study showing that colors bring up your mood like the color you wear can literally change the way you feel so i'm all about adding colors to your wardrobe to make sure that you don't go too much too fast i would start venturing into more of subtle colors so the emerald greens the navy with a tan and a gray so these are neutrals that are not black and those are really easy to add more color into so those work with a lot of different colors on the color wheel where you can bring those color in in a form of accessory or in a form of just like a jacket or a blazer so you say you're venturing into more of the emeralds some beautiful colors to bring in can be like a yellow or a mustard or like a tan a cream there's a lot of really cool colors you can start incorporating I would probably give you these two advices start slow and start looking at on a color wheel that will help you very much in seeing which other colors you can bring in it can start small honestly like a lipstick a little bag a scarf a blazer start from there also I really want to show you this one account that I absolutely adore this will give you a really cool idea of how you can mix and match different colors. It's actually based on a cinema. You don't necessarily always have to follow just fashion influencers. There's a lot of different accounts that can really inspire the way you mix things and how you see different colors combined together. So this specific one is one that I like for myself. It is called Color Palette Cinema and it has kind of scenes from different movies and it puts all these different like colors together. It's really fascinating, really cool to see. This is a great example of how, you know, you can wear kind of a navy or darker green and see what other colors you can bring in to create a little more of a pop. And because you have a visual, it actually kind of helps to get it all together. Hopefully it helps. And if it's not, it's just a really cool account to follow anyways. Okay, going on a date to a museum and I have no idea what to wear. First of all, you want to make sure that you're wearing comfortable shoes because girl, let me tell you, there is nothing that will kill your vibe than being so, so uncomfortable in your shoes. Obviously, museum, you'll be walking around doing your thing. Please wear shoes that are comfortable. You can always opt for something very casual like a pair of jeans that you love, how they sit on you, and then maybe like a cute oversized sweater. I always find that on first dates, it's really the time to make an impression with kind of your personality rather than being too consumed with the way you look. If you want to stay in your comfort zone, do that. Now, I understand it's a first date, you want to make an impression, so I would honestly just say focus on wearing something that represents you and not someone you want to be because you feel like it can't swallow you up a bit so I would really go honestly for like a pair of jeans maybe like sneakers a white tee and a trench or like a blazer just keeping it really simple really nice make sure you smell good make sure your hair is beautiful natural makeup just 
dazzle. How do I style my baby bump? Oh my goodness, the amount of questions I get about pregnancy style. It makes me feel very good because I feel like I shared a lot of my pregnancy style when I was pregnant with Maxi with you guys and it resonated really well. I have to say I really had a very like clear go-to when it comes to styling my bump. First of all, I very much did not buy any pregnancy clothes per se, like I didn't go to maternity stores was not interested in that. A lot of the times when I purchase new items, I would either purchase it just from regular stores, just get like a bigger size, but also keep it in mind, will I be able to style this when I'm not pregnant? Because I didn't want to just buy a mountain of clothes that I can wear for a few months and then I have nothing else to do with it. Also wanted to look cute. Another thing is I would definitely go into Gary's closet and grab some stuff from there, especially like button ups. Then I would repurpose some of my clothes. Something that I've worn the most of is a slip dresses. I went to Aritzia, I remember, I bought three slip dresses in size medium and I wore them to death, like literally. I wore them in the summer with blazers on top or just like cute little cardigans. I wore them as it got a little bit colder, putting it on with sweaters. I would put a belt, my belt hack if you guys remember, and I would create, make them into skirts. That way you can put boots on, you can put it with sneakers, wear a lot of sneakers obviously. I actually didn't wear a lot of pants, it was more dresses, and was just very focusing on A-line dresses. So anything that was maybe a bit more fitted here, but then kind of opened up, which uh, really helped me because I still wear those items because you don't need to be a certain size to wear those. So focused more of those like really beautiful feminine silhouettes of just like flowy, flowy, flowy. Should I keep my skinny jeans even if they're no longer in? Okay, first of all, yes, I definitely made a video saying that skinny jeans are not in anymore. Obviously, this is based on kind of what's going on in the fashion industry. But again, this is so up to your discretion, so up to you. You will not look outdated wearing them if you style them correctly. So first of all, I think skinny jeans are extremely necessary for winter time because there's nothing worse than to try to fit wider leg jeans into boots. Ugh. So skinny jeans will always have a place there. And then also if you do feel that maybe the super super tight jeans just feels a bit outdated, go for more of like a cigar or like a straighter kind of cut. So it will give you the same element because the skinny jeans, what they do is they really accentuate your figure and really kind of keep everything narrow. The narrow one, the straight ones will have the same effect and you will feel like you're a bit more up to date with what's going on. But nonetheless, there's a lot of skinny jeans that are still selling from a lot of different brands, which shows that a lot of people still buy it. If you do want to transition, try the cigarette or like the straighter leg. If you don't, keep it. How do you make a basic look cool in the winter? This is the million dollar question. No, actually it's pretty easy, I have to say. I think that we're overthinking it because in the summer, in the spring, like it's really all about what we wear because there's not a lot of items. So you're always trying to like, you know, kind of overdo it a bit. But in the winter, it's simple because there is the aspect of a layering. Layering properly can actually transfer the look and make it look so chic and so cool. I'm talking about adding different patterns to the layering. So you can start with like your basic, let's say a turtleneck, if it's black or beige or camel or gray, then bring either some kind of a texture or a pattern. I just have that. A blazer on top of it and then like a trench coat or kind of a, a peacoat. Peacoat? Peacock? How do you call those coats? Peacoat. Yes, that was right. You can really play along those kind of lines. Another thing that can be cool is even wearing uh, or layering, let's say a gray hoodie, and then you put a denim jacket. It can be a black one, a washed out one, a blue one, and then again, like a tan pea coat. Honestly, just focus on mixing different colors. For me, the bottom is pretty consistent throughout winter. It will either be black, like straight cut jeans, or just like a blue denim, and then just like chunky boots. Obviously you can then add some fun aspect of like maybe like a colorful hat or like a beret. You know, there are ways to make it work. There's ways to play around. Trust the process. 
what shoes can I wear with flare jeans? So it depends what flare jeans you're talking about. If it's a full length like I'm wearing right now, I would probably style it with either like a chunkier sneaker or I would put a chunkier boot. Those are really kind of my go-tos and keep it at that. And if it's ankle length flare jeans, then again, a booty would be great. It would actually elongate the leg. These are also like higher boots are great for that because it's flared, you have room to kind of put the boot under the jeans. For someone who is more style shy, how do I step outside of my comfort zone? So for me, when I started to play around with fashion, I really, really leaned into creating kind of a visual board for myself. So Pinterest is a great way to put together some inspiration and it doesn't have to be in the form of, let's say, of what other people are wearing, but even like your Hollywood stars that you like or like even old Hollywood, like what is the essence? What are you about? What are you trying to portray in the world? And I think that slowly you will recognize certain repeating imagery or repeating items and you can start adding those into your closet. See it on like visually will help you to understand how can I start exploring and expanding my style and by the way there's gonna be hits and misses just so you know and that's part of the game like that's the whole thing no one knows what the hell they're doing in general in life not just in style like in general until you do you know how do I layer in the winter time without looking, feeling too bulky? I did mention that layering is my go-to when it comes to winter styling. And the way I like to layer is to make sure that I use the thinnest fabrics possible on my baseline. So let's say a very thin cardigan or like a turtleneck just like this. And then you can put a blazer and then that's when I would go into like a pea coat or into a trench coat. So really making sure that there's balance with the materials you're using. I think that's where sometimes the bulkiness feels like it's not working. Avoid like obviously putting let's say a teddy jacket and then layering it with another jacket that's not gonna be it. I also really dislike scarves like I hate the scarves. They just makes make me feel like I'm suffocating it is gonna be very you know uh, less of the lean look and more like a oversized Look, which is very chic by the way just saying embrace it how to refine your style post-pregnancy who are you now like you're changing you're evolving don't try to be the woman you were before having kids like I know my style has changed I know comfort became a huge part of my choices when it comes to styling and fashion I also found what are my essentials now and what things I shouldn't buy and invest in like maybe a white coat let's say so you'll have to kind of combine your new life and new routine with what works for your body now and I think my biggest message is to really try to avoid like going back to who you used to be even body wise I hate this like bounce back you don't bounce back you bounce forward you now have a new body a new sense of self and it's empowering and it's amazing and embrace it you're gonna find what works for you. Who are your major fashion icons inspiration? You know what I feel like in today's time and age with social media it's difficult to name specific style icons or fashion icons because I am inspired by so many people and their take on fashion these days like I'm always exposed to so many great accounts and it's even sometimes overwhelming because you want to experiment all the time based on seeing someone who inspired you just like random people making cool things work and putting looks together. I don't really have one specific one. For me, it moved away from being like Jane Birkin style mixed with 90s Kate Moss mixed with Audrey Hepburn into more of identifying my style with like masculine, feminine, casual chic, like things like that. It's not really about putting labels on it. It's more like I know what works for my body. I know what makes me feel good. Those kind of things really lead you into understanding better better what you want to have in your closet. What pieces should I invest in and what pieces should I save on? This is a great question. So for me, honestly, it's a bit different now because again, thrifting is like a huge market and there's a lot of great platforms that you can even thrift online. So for me, I used to be like, oh, invest in like a good leather jacket. But my first leather jacket that was like not pleather, but like leather was very expensive. But then now the one that I wear the most is actually a thrifted one for like 
$80. I feel like you don't necessarily even need to invest so much in a good piece. You just have to have the patience to find something good. But for me, it would be a leather jacket, a pea coat, a trench, shoes. Like invest in shoes just for your own good and in general for like quality and for the look. Like those are things that you wear all the time. I guess for me also the fabrics that I wear, like I mentioned in the winter because I layer, I wanna make sure that my base fabrics are really soft and comfortable. So that's something I invest in. Otherwise everything else can be pretty much found for a good price. What are your best thrift tips? <laughs> so there's this thing where it's like human nature, but whenever we see something like we kind of like, and then it, the price is like pretty low, we buy it even though we don't like really need it. So I feel like to avoid that trap, just make sure that you get what you need. And by understanding what it is that you need, look in your closet of what you need. I personally love buying staples like through thrifting. So again, I always look go to thrifting I'm looking for like a really good and well-made blazer a great leather jacket some tailored pieces I always buy like these like timeless pieces when I thrift because you know what not a lot has changed when it comes to good tailoring and things like that also a lot of things go back into style it's like a circle so you'll find a lot of the things that are even trendy now in thrift stores probably made way better than the actual new things in stores. If you find a piece that you like and it's like too big, don't make the mistake of just passing over it because you can tailor everything. I mean, I tailor everything that I thrift to make sure that it fits properly. I tailor most of the things that I buy new actually because I want it to fit me. Tailoring and uh, really finding like good key pieces is probably my main tips. Okay, trends. A few questions about trends. How do you feel about the Y2K fashion trend? I feel like it's really cute and it's very, very trendy and it can make you feel cute and it's like a little walk down the memory lane for us. So I don't hate it, but I feel like some people take it way too far, but I'm like, who am I to judge? If it makes you feel good, do your thing. I'm at that age where it's like you put something on, you're like, am I too old to wear this? You know? What are your favorite trends right now? This is a great question. Uh, I would say one of my favorite trends right now is, first of all, the fact that brown is so back, like heavy. There's something about the color and wearing all brown outfit that kind of brings like warmth, exudes some like class. I can't explain it. Colors are again a trend that is still going on for this season and this year. I just really, really love the return of color. So a lot of great like yellows and reds and blues and greens. I'm here for it. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments if it was helpful. We got lots of inspiration from all of everything that we shared on screen as well. Let me know what else you'd like to know. And I will see you next time.